All right, so in this uh, second part of the demo, I'm going to show you where localhost basically is pulling its files from and what this dashboard business is all about. Okay, so the first thing that uh, you get whenever you go to this dashboard is it gives, gives you this welcome page. But then you've got some links up here on the dashboard. You've got a link to applications, which really doesn't tell you much of anything. It's just about the Bitnami stuff. There's FAQs. I'm going to just let you read that stuff yourself. How-to guides, again, uh, these are actually uh, more advanced things. Here's some uh, troubleshooting Apache startup problems. So if you are having trouble with that, you can look at this. Um, anyway, I'm not going to actually change anything, but I just want to show you this so that you can see that there are some tutorials and help sections in here. All right. PHP info. What is this file? PHP info is, um, it's actually a, a function, a predefined function that is in um, the PHP library. And you can just call the PHP info function and it'll give you this. And basically what it, it, it's giving you is all of the things that this particular installation was configured with. So if you ever need to find, for instance, whether or not, you know, you have like GD library or something like that for the drawing libraries or whatever you can look through there. Um, it also gives you a ton of other information. I'm not going to go through all of this, but if you really quickly wanted to do uh, command F for find, you could type in display and it's going to jump to display errors. And one of the first things that I want you to notice is that display errors is turned on. If for any reason you're ever using an installation and you get a blank page, right, where the blank page, you know, it just doesn't load anything and you're, you're, you know, you're using PHP, the chances are is that you have some sort of error that's happening that's preventing the page from loading. And that display errors is actually disabled in the php.ini file. What this is doing is this is reading information from a lot of different variables, but it, it finds a lot of stuff from the php.ini file, which is the configuration file for the PHP um, installation. And if display errors is disabled, you need to actually go into that php.ini file and you need to turn it on. And that way, whenever you get errors, it's not going to load a blank page where you can't tell what's going on. It'll actually give you the error messages that you need. That's the thing that I'm going to start off with. It's the most important. Uh, but some of the other things that I would uh, recommend if you wanted to look at, you know, you could see uh, that, for instance, this is your root pathway to you know, where the error log is stored. And there's some other things in here, though, that later we might make a reference to. And uh, you're going to end up needing to find some of this information to, to figure out how to do some stuff in PHP. OK, so and then also if you go here to PHP My Admin, all right, it's giving me this error because I haven't started my SQL. This is the graphic user interface web application that will connect to the MySQL server. And uh, and we have MariaDB installed, but that's the version of MySQL that we're using uh, for, for uh, Jamp. So if you were to go back over here and find your control panel, you want to select MySQL database. You want to hit start if you want to just make sure that you're your uh, installation is working. And then uh, as soon as this turns green, we'll go back over here and we'll refresh the page. So if I come over here, we'll try to retry to connect and it's working. And this is the graphic user interface uh, for MySQL so that you don't have to go through the command prompt. Now we're not gonna do anything with databases just yet in this class. So I'm gonna not really have any kind of discussion about this right now, but just so you know, PHP My Admin uh, comes with a lot of these development packages like Jamp and MAMP and LAMP and all this stuff because um, it, it's actually the graphic user interface that is free, it's really well supported, and it's available on almost every single web host that you might ever happen to um, need to use, ever. Right, and so there are other ways that you connect. You can connect to the MySQL server, but this is by far the most common. So let's go back here. Um, all right, so anyway, that's what this dashboard is. Now, if you're wondering, okay, well, what if I don't want to go to the dashboard? You, you just want to go straight to your localhost directory 
and it automatically redirects you here. Well, let's figure out what's going on there. Um, if you go to your Jamp control panel again, go back to welcome. On the welcome screen, there's that go to application, which takes you to the dashboard in a web browser. Um, you can also go to open application folder. And what it does is it jumps directly to uh, your Jamp files folder. And I'm going to talk to you about the directory paths here. Uh, but one of the things that you'll see is that inside of there, there is a folder called htdocs. I'm going to go inside of htdocs. htdocs is your web serving directory, OK? So um, this folder, htdocs, is what is mapped to being your root level web serving directory in your development uh, server on your computer, right? So anything that you, where you go to localhost, like if you go to localhost, you're basically loading this folder right here. So if let's get a listing of a directory listing here of what's in that folder. We have that applications.html folder, and if I were to look at it real quickly, you can see that it's that same folder. It doesn't have the styling attached to it, right? But it's this fo it's this file right here. Right? That's what that is. So if I were to delete that, this page wouldn't load. Um, and then this is a CSS file for something. This is the favicon that shows up up here in the little tab. Um, and these are some images. Right. This index page, however, uh, oh, and then everything else is actually inside of this dashboard. Most everything else is. And if you were to load that, you would be able to scroll through and it shows you a bunch of stuff. And right. So. Anyway, so what I'm going to show you then is this index page. If I were to open this, I'm just going to open it in Dreamweaver. Okay, and then it's telling me that php.index is a locked file. It can't, it can be viewed but not changed. What do I want to do with this file? Well, I'm going to, I'm, I can view it, right? I'm going to go ahead and view it. Um, and then I'm going to explain some stuff here, but then I'm going to show you how we can actually modify this file. So. Uh, if you go and look at this, this first uh, statement in the PHP tags, right? and we haven't talked about how PHP is structured, we'll get to that later, but in this first uh, statement there's an if, um, an if statement, right? So it's basically getting some information <clears throat> and it's checking to see if basically the, the web surface is running. And if it is, then it's doing this header this thing called a header, and it's a redirection to the location of the variable, which is the host name of localhost, all right, um, and then taking you to dashboard. So it's doing, right here, it's doing this redirection. Well, I don't like that. I don't want to deal with that. I want to actually get a directory listing. So if I just close this file, I could have changed it if I wanted to, but I want to show you something really quickly. The reason it said it was locked, I couldn't, I couldn't modify it, is if I do... Um, a right click and I say get info on this file. I want to show you the permissions on it. By default, it's uh, saying that the daemon, and this is pronounced daemon, um, the daemon is uh, user and daemon group is all that's able to read and write that file. Everyone else is only able to read it. Well, I could change that. I can un, you know, I can give myself permission to make modifications to that, and I can say read and write because I'm an administrator I have permission to change that so now if I wanted to you know modify that file I could All right so I could either open it or I could get rid of it or the other thing that I could do is I can just if I don't want to actually get rid of anything I can just call it index dash uh, original or something like that okay and then if I do that and now I go to localhost let's just go to localhost by itself it gives me a directory listing which is perfect that's exactly what I want. I don't want to have to go to the dashboard every single time. But the thing is, is if I do want to go to the dashboard, I can just click it right there. And then now I've got the dashboard and I can still navigate around as long as I don't delete anything. Okay. The other thing I do want you to notice too is, uh, is actually this right here where it says PHP my admin. The reason I'm not getting rid of the dashboard is because if you were to actually look inside of this dashboard folder, because I, I could get rid of a bunch of that stuff if I really wanted to. And I go and I look inside of PHP. Uh, I go and I look for this PHP my admin folder. You'll see that there is no such PHP my admin folder here. All right. So that's something that's kind of important to understand. It's doing, again, this uh, 
it's it's a mod rewrite. I, I'm not going to explain what that is right now, but it's rewriting the folder so that it matches right here. And I don't want to get rid of my ability to just at, you know really easily click and go to it right there. Okay, so that's something that I'm just going to leave alone. And now what I want to show you is where everything is really located on your computer. All the stuff that just got put on your computer. I showed you how you could you know go here to the control panel and uh, it's down here. And you could you know open the applications folder and it takes you to some folders called ZAMP files. Well, here's what happened, okay? Whenever we installed it, it created a folder right here called ZAMP, all right? And inside of that, if we go inside of that folder, all right, what we have are a bunch of, these little arrows mean that they're shortcuts, they're aliases that take us to locations that are inside of the ZAMP files folder. And that is the folder that that control panel was taking us to. I'm going to actually do it in list view here. And I'm not going to go into great detail about this, but what's super important, this is the thing that's really, really important, is this htdocs. That folder right there is the one that is going to be where you put all of your web serving files. Not, all these other things are important uh, because this, the the distribution uses them uh, for you know like loading your PHP, running your Apache, and all that stuff. But the htdocs is actually the folder that is going to um, be your web serving directory. So if you were to look inside of that, you see that that's where that stuff was, like the dashboard and all of that. So one of the things that I like to do just so that it kind of sticks out is I sometimes will assign an icon to it. So I've already downloaded uh, an icon from the web that I wanted to use and I'll show you here. So I've got this right here. I'm gonna just open it and it's gonna open like in preview or something and it's got a transparency behind it. If I do a command A for select all, I'm gonna hit the copy, so command C to copy it into my clipboard. So if I do that and then I come back to my folder here and I do a get info on it, I can select the little icon up here and I can paste. And if I do, so that was command V, you have to use your keyboard controls for this. So if I do command V, then it pastes that icon. So now I have an icon that's actually, that really sticks out a lot and that's good. And the other thing too that I can then do is drag it into my dock. So I'm gonna click it and I'm just gonna drag it over here I'm going to drop it right there. And then if it shows up looking like this, you can right click on it and you can tell it to be a folder view. And if for some reason it doesn't show up with your icon, if it just shows up as a regular folder, you can go ahead and tell it to be stack view and then change it back to folder view and it should take it. That's kind of a nice thing to always have that present right there. The other thing that you can always do is you can add it so that it's really simple and easy to get, say, from like right here. And now it's not going to carry your icon right here, but you'll always be able to just jump to it really simply like that. And then here's your folder for htdocs. And you could also make an alias like on the desktop or whatever, however you want to do it. Um, but that's one of the things that I like to do so that it's really simple to always jump to that folder. And now the reason that it's really handy to have that so available is because any kind of web files that you're going to be testing that use PHP have to go here. So let's say that you put them somewhere else on your computer. Well, you're going to have to copy them into this folder anyway, every single time you need to make changes. So in this particular class, you might as well get used to making all of your web stuff in this folder because that way you can just easily go to the web and load it and you'll see. So like if I come back up here now, you know, I've got my directory listing. I could just pick something to test from right there. What I do is I'm going to recommend that you leave all this stuff the same, and then you can make a new folder. I'm going to make a new folder here that's called dev, and you can call it whatever you want, but I call it dev because it stands for development. You can also, like some people would call it sandbox dev, but a lot of programs will have like a little dev folder of some sort so that they can put their scripts in there for testing. And then if you wanted to have other project folders out here, you know, you could like if you needed to do something like new folder and call it project one, project two, whatever, but all your little testing scripts would go inside of here. Okay, so anyway, this is our dev folder. Now if I come back over here to localhost and I hit the refresh key, you see that I've got my dev folder. It's empty, but the thing that's nice about it is that it's extremely handy. So anyway, that's the end of this demonstration, and uh, you can move on to the next one.